Good morning, learners. So I am Blessy Yutok, your TVL Food Processing NC2 teacher. So are you ready to learn new things today? Okay, very good. So let's start. Before we start our new lesson, let's first do this activity. So this will serve as our review on our last topic and it is entitled, Guess Me. So looking at the images or GP closely, you will find each picture showing different cutting techniques. Identify if what technique was shown in the picture. Let's see the first picture. So that picture shows what kind of cutting technique. Very good, mincing. And mincing means? Means to cut into very small pieces. Okay, let's see this next picture. That picture shows what kind of cutting technique. Very good, that is chopping. And chopping means? Means to cut food into bite-sized pieces. Let's see the last picture. Okay, so that picture shows what kind of cutting techniques. Very good, Julian. And Julian means? It means to cut into long, uniform strips like matchsticks. Okay, great job. I am glad that you learned a lot from our last topic. So at this moment, we will have another activity. And, it's, and it is called the crossword puzzle. So solve the puzzle below by finding the following words and connect it. So let's find the first word, sugar. The next word, acid. The third word, fruits. The fourth is cook. And the last word is pectin. Okay, very good class. So how do you find your activity so far? So this time, we are ready to discuss how to prepare acid, pectin, and sugar mixture in processing food by sugar concentration. So here are our, our objectives for today's lesson. Explain what are the essential aids in processing food, fruits by sugar concentrations. Measure acid and sugar with chopped fruit pulp, juice extract, pieces of fruits according to the approved specification. Appreciate the importance of preserving fruits. So those are our objectives for today's lesson. So now let's start the discussion about preserving fruits. So preserving fruits are one means to extend the shelf life of fruit juice, at the same time enable the customers or consumers to enjoy the body and texture of each gel. A mouthfeel that is relished by all. It can be sold for a good price and can be even worthwhile to start a small preserving business. So what are the essentials and aids in processing fruits by sugar concentration? So we have the first, the pectin. It is the term used for carbohydrate-like substances found in slightly underripe, which form colloidal solutions in water. It is main agent that causes jam, jellies, and marmalades to set. It is known as the jellying agent. Different fruits contain different amounts of pectin, and that pectin level will also vary according to the season, and also the ripeness of the fruit. We have the second, the acid. It is essential for flavor and for gel formation. It toughens the structure, making sugar preserves product firmer. For fruits lacking natural acid, like strawberries, recipes call for lemon juice or other citrus fruit. Commercial pectin products contain organic acid that increase the acid content of fruits. And we have the last, the sugar. It is the common preservatives in making jam, jelly, and marmalade. It plays an important role in food preservation because it increases the shelf life of the product. It acts the as the precipitating agent causing it to form the network of the gel. In the presence of acid, less sugar is necessary to precipitate the pectin. We have also three ways of testing the pectin content. So the first one, the cooking test. In a small pot, combine one third of juice and one fourth cup of sugar. Heat slowly to dissolve sugar. Then boil mixture rapidly 
until it satisfies the spoon test. Pour the jelly into a small jar and let it cool. If the mixture gels, the fruit juice will produce jelly. When the gel forms, then it is rich in pectin. Increasing the amount of sugar accelerates the strength setting of the gel. In addition to its role, it is also contributes to the flavor of the product. So we have the next, the alcohol test. The nature of precipitation will determine the pectin content of the juice. Mix 2 tablespoons of nutrated 95% food alcohol with 1 tablespoon of fruit juice. A transparent jelly-like lump is formed and then fruit juice is rich in pectin. If jelly-like lot is not very firm and is broken, then the fruit juice is with moderate amount of pectin. But when cloth is broken into numerous small pieces, then the fruit is with very little pectin content. And the last is the viscosity or the jelly meter, meter test. So this is a graduated glass tube with an opening at each end. It is used to determine the amount of pectin in fruit juice. The rate of the flow of the juice through the tube is used as measure the jellying power of the juice. So now let's watch a short video of testing pectin content of fruits. Testing for pectin content. Take 2 tablespoons of denatured alcohol. Add 1 teaspoon sample of the fruit to the alcohol. Gently shake the container and set aside for 3 to 5 minutes. After 3 to 5 minutes, examine the fruit. Look for jelly lumps. A large firm lump means that the fruit has high pectin content, while small soft lumps mean the fruit has low pectin content. So now let's proceed to testing fruit for acid content. So acid is a substance which makes jelly firm and it is essential for flavor and gel formation. Its gel formation occurs from pH 2.5 to pH 3.4. So pH refers to the level of acidity and alkalinity of a mixture. The ideal pH value is pH 3.2. To test the acidity of the fruits, mix 1 tablespoon of calamansi juice and 8 tablespoon or 1 half cup of water. The fruit juice has high acid content if it tastes as sour as the calamansi juice. Compare its taste with that of the fruit juice. If fruit juices lack acid, you may increase the fruit juice's acidity by adding calamansi, lemon juice, or commercial citric. On the other hand, if fruit juice has too high acid content, combine it with juices low in acidity to meet the standard acid solution. Testing Fruit Acidity Boil the fruit in water until a thick consistency is achieved. Take half a cup of the fruit juice and transfer it into a container. Leave to cool down. Place the probe of the pH meter in the sample and leave for 1 to 2 minutes. Once the reading has stabilized, record the pH level. Let us remember, not all fruits have the properties needed for making satisfactory jellies, jam, marmalades, fruit preserves, fruit paste, and candied fruits. You should use fruits that are rich in pectin. Examples of these are santol, tamarind, guava, and other acidic fruits. 
Fruits rich in both pectin acid are guava, santol, tamarind, bignay, sour orange, and apple. Fruits low in acid but rich in pectin are rare ripe papaya, melon, bananas, and oranges. Fruits rich in acid but low in pectin are berries, grapes, pineapples, and sour mango. Fruits that lack acid may be mixed with other fruits with high acid content or acid may be added in the form of calamansi or lemon juice or commercial section. So now, let's try this activity to measure mastery in preparing acid, pectin, and sugar mixture. So all you have to do is to encircle the pictures of fruits rich in both pectin and acid. Let's see. Santol. Very good. Guava. Tamarind, Bignay, and Sour Orange. Okay, very good class. So for your practical application, test the pectin and acid content of the fruit by using alcohol test and standard, standard dice test according to approved specification. Demonstrate the testing of at least two kinds of fruits available in your locality. Follow the procedures correctly. You will be rated based on the overall evaluation of the right side. Present your output and kindly send your video of your performance on your group chat on Messenger. Okay, so let's end this lesson with your assignment. That's it for today. Thank you and God.